that uh, John was saying. That's why Lee Cushing was smiling there. Will he be smiling again later, and will his smile be even bigger? Well, I think if you uh, if we look at the results to be announced today, I mean, I, I'm quite comfortable that uh, the set of result will be very encouraging. I mean, in terms of headline number, in terms of growth, it's going to be uh, pretty impressive. Where's the main growth going to be coming from? Well, I mean, um, if you look at the whole group, I mean, obviously the growth is coming from Hutchison. Uh, both a turnaround in the cooperation, especially with telecom, and also uh, disposal gains. I mean, obviously, first half they have a few uh, spin off that uh, actually generate pretty decent uh, disposal gains. Yeah, so uh, we also are looking forward to the forecast. I should also tell us a little bit more about the, um, the, the picture for Hong Kong, really, too. Well, I mean, if, if you look at the uh, sort of breakdown, I mean, the whole group, I mean, the contribution from Hong Kong assets, whatever. It's actually pretty small. I mean, uh, for example, I mean, we forecast around three, four billion development profit uh, for Chiang Kong in the first half. I mean, out of a headline number of uh, about thirty something billion. So, I mean, it's only like uh, ten, fifteen percent of the earnings actually coming from Hong Kong. Uh, actually. Chiang Kong's earnings are very diversified, especially with Hutchison's contribution. Um, when you look at Chiang Kong, just looking at that bit, um, how does it stack up next to the other companies like uh, Sun Hong Kai uh, property, for instance? Well, I think in terms of growth, I mean, uh, Sun Hong Kai and uh, Chiang Kong will be uh, delivering pretty decent growth because they have land bank and they have strong balance sheet to buy to purchase land bank. Uh, but for Chiang Kong, the key thing is uh, it's more a lot more diversified than its peers at the moment because uh, they have property exposure in China, Singapore as well as UK and through Hutchison Global conglomerate. So it's definitely a lot more diversified uh, than uh, its peers in Hong Kong. Well, we, we saw John was talking about the, the acquisitions he's been making. Uh, Northumbria Motor was right. the latest one. Uh, what did you make of that? Well, I think uh, if you look at Chiang Kong, uh, the uh, opportunity or the problem is that uh, they got a very uh, strong balance sheet. I mean, and, and given the fact that Hong Kong dollar will depreciate or weaken alongside with U.S. dollar, I think it's, uh, it's positive or it's beneficial for Chiang Kong to invest outside Hong Kong. I mean, obviously, the water company may offer a pretty good prospect in the medium to long term and also a pretty uh, uh, good bet on currency. Yeah, you don't like uh, Henderson Land compared to Chiang Kong, though, do you? Well, I mean, uh, we don't like Henderson Land in the last few months because uh, there are balance sheet concerns. I mean, they, they obviously uh, don't have uh, enough uh, cash flow to finance the land purchases. And also, in the uh, last year, I mean, they've been selling property at very slowly, but in the last two months we've been seeing uh, accelerate property sales, so uh, we are actually turning a little bit more positive on Henderson Land. Okay, uh, just a quick word also on uh, the, the Chinese side of the whole right. story when it comes to Chiang Kong. Well, I mean, uh, Chiang Kong also have a very big exposure in uh, China in terms of property. They got uh, one of the largest land bank, and also they are building a lot of investment property hotels in China, but the China story, it's going to be a little bit longer term. I think uh, probably in the next five to ten years, I think uh, given uh, Chiang Kong's exposure, current expo build, the exposure they build up in China, it's going to be another earnings driver, growth driver for Chiang Kong.